Somewhere in Arizona, U.S., a group of armed FBI troops raided a house that was allegedly used to hold kidnapping victims. During the raid, a female who led the team named Kate Mazur was entering a room when suddenly almost got shot by the owner of the house. She unintentionally shot and killed the shooter. When her friend, Reggie Wayne, who was also part of her team entered the room, he found a hole from the missed shot earlier and saw something terrible from inside the wall. After they broke open the wall, they found dead bodies implanted inside the walls wrapped in plastics. Shortly after, their chief Dave Jennings came and immediately investigated the crime scene accompanied by Kate. The forensic team told him that they had found 35 dead bodies planted inside the walls of the house, which was the property of a man named Manuel Diaz, a member of Sonora Cartel, and after further investigation, one of the police found a locked trapdoor leading to a suspicious basement. He shouted to someone to bring him a bolt cutter. When Kate heard that the police had found something, she approached the window to look outside. Vickers! Need bolt cutter! PD found something. That was when an explosion happened, killing two of the police officers there. The next day after the incident, Kate was called into the office. She was recommended by her superior to join the joint task forces led by a man named Matt Graver. In an interview, Kate was asked some detailed questions about her knowledge of the drug cartel. From the interview, Matt seemed satisfied and agreed to include her in the team, but not with her partner, Reggie. At that meeting, Kate found out that the incident was not pure kidnapping and murder case, but it has a connection to drug cartel activities. The government planned to expand the scope of the investigation by assigning joint forces to the mission. Kate was assigned as the liaison agent for the states and their mission would start from El Paso, Texas, to pick up Manuel Diaz's brother, Guillermo, from the prison. She was still collecting herself since she was not used to drug cartel cases as her expertise was in the murder case. Matt then told her to meet him at the Luke Air Force Base the following day. The next day, Kate accompanied by Reggie arrived at the gate to Luke Air Force Base. They were stopped by the guards for some inspection and turned out that Reggie didn't have permission to enter so they both separated from there. They then took one of the planes to get to their destination, and that was when Kate met Alejandro Gillick. Shortly after they landed, they immediately attended a meeting of the Joint Task Force. There, several troops from U.S. Marshals, Delta Force Operations, and CIA personnel were attending. They discussed the mission plan to pick up Guillermo from the prison which turned out to be in Juarez, Mexico. Kate who saw Alejandro then asked him who he really was. He replied that he was a former Mexican prosecutor. Kate was confused to find a prosecutor in the mission. Next, Kate confronted Matt after the meeting. She was confused that the mission was adjacent to what she initially informed. Matt just replied by ordering her to follow the plan and not to ask any questions or object to the mission. The mission began with them driving across the border to Juarez, a city that had been controlled by the drug cartel in Mexico. When they arrived in the middle of the city, Kate saw some mutilated corpses hanged. They then continued to the prison to pick up Guillermo, but when they were on their way returning to America, at the El Paso Juarez border, a group of cartel hitmen ambushed them. The Delta forces quickly controlled the situation and killed all the hitmen, but during the gunfight, Kate was forced to kill one Federal, a Mexican national police force. Gun, gun left. Move. Wait, wait, wait. Don't move! Kill the pit! When they arrived in America, Kate was angry at Matt for the action they took in the middle of the city regarding the ambush before. She thought of it as an illegal act and violated the procedures, considering it was in the middle of civilians and could possibly harm someone in the process. Matt who didn't want to be blamed denied all accusations Kate said against him as his action was something that had to be done and told Kate to learn from that incident. On the other hand, at the headquarter, Alejandro met his colleague from Mexico who informed him about the secret tunnel that the Sonora drug cartel used to go to Arizona to distribute their drug. After meeting him, Alejandro went to the interrogation room and straight asked some questions to Guillermo, Manuel Diaz's brother. Manuel Diaz himself is an elite in the Sonora drug cartel that operated in America. The only way possible to find out his whereabouts was by scraping all the information right from Guillermo, therefore, he was brought from the prison in Mexico to America to help with the interrogation process. After interrogating Guillermo, Matt, Alejandro, and Kate proceeded to go to the city of Arizona. Escorted by Reggie, they arrived at a shelter for illegal immigrants. They managed to gather a lot of illegal immigrants in that place. 
Curious about what they were looking for, Reggie then asked Matt for an explanation. What are we looking for? Hi. Matt, can we talk for a minute? Matt told him that apparently, as the result of their previous interrogation with Guillermo, they found out that the Sura cartel used an underground tunnel to transport their drugs to America from Mexico, the same exact information that Alejandro got from his colleague. That location they were was apparently the location where the tunnel ended and they had to gather information from the immigrants about the exact location of the tunnel. Matt also said that he already had a scenario to help him get the location of the cartel's big boss Fausto Alarcón. The plan would force Manuel Diaz to return to Mexico to meet his boss. Of course, the only possible way for Manuel Diaz to return to Mexico was to use the tunnel, so finding the exact location of the tunnel now was the main priority of Matt and Alejandro. The next day, they went to a motel that was used as a base for their operation where they gathered some immigrants who were giving information about the location of the tunnel used by the cartel members. After he gathered the information he needed, Matt started the next phase of the mission by asking Kate to contact her acquaintances in the SWAT to arrest Manuel Diaz's courier in a bank that was used to launder his money. Hey Kate, any friends of Phoenix SWAT? We are gonna fuck with Manuel Diaz's wallet. This is our Smurf guy. No, 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 just the money. After the arrest, Kate invited Matt to come with her to the bank to gather more evidence but Matt instead asked her to stay away from the bank. Unfortunately, she didn't seem to care about Matt's warning and went to the bank instead. Unlucky for her, her face was recorded by the security cameras there. After finding the financial evidence from the bank, Kate and Reggie wanted to start a legal case against Manuel Diaz but were ordered to stay back to avoid jeopardizing the whole plan. Matt apparently had a bigger plan than just targeting Manuel Diaz. He wanted to find out Fausto Alarcón's location and the only way was to keep their distance from Manuel Diaz while still monitoring his movement. It was clear that Matt and Kate had no chemistry at all despite being on the same team. Somewhere else, a man was seen having a call with someone. The man turned out to be Manuel Diaz himself. He was told by one of his men that the courier who brought his money was arrested. After that incident, his account was declined. After the argument with Matt, Kate and Reggie went to the bar to get the stress out. There, they met with Reggie's friend named Ted. Kate got acquainted with him and spent the night together. After that, Kate invited him to her place and was about to make out until when she saw Ted's bracelet which turned out had the exact same pattern as the bracelet that Manuel Diaz used to tie his money. She tried to confront him but her strength was no match with Ted's. Ted grabbed her and strangled her in the neck. She almost lost her consciousness until somehow, Alejandro was there, pointing a gun at Ted to stop what he was doing. Turned out, after Kate entered the scene in the bank earlier, Matt and Alejandro had predicted that she would be targeted to kill so they decided to follow her. I thought he was afraid. I know. It's okay, Rich. After managing to immobilize Ted, Alejandro asked him to give all information that he knew about corrupt police officers that had connections to the drug cartel. During the interrogation, Alejandro also found out about the time when Manuel Diaz would use the tunnel to return to Mexico. Give me all the names. Next, Kate and Reg once again visited the motel. Along with the other team members, they monitored Manuel Diaz's activity and found out the exact location of the tunnel by using drones. The team then prepared the ambush on the tunnel which was located in the country birder. Before moving for the mission, Matt told Kate and Reggie to stay in hindsight during the operation. Hearing that, they felt underestimated but couldn't do anything about it, turned out, including her and Reggie in the mission was just a requirement for them to be able to freely operate the mission because without including domestic agents in the team, the CIA wouldn't be able to get the permission they needed for the operation. Long story short, the team arrived at the tunnel and started the ambush mission there. When they entered the tunnel, they found out that the tunnel branched into a lot of ways. A gunfight broke out in the tunnel and Kate somehow parted from the rest of the team. On the other hand, Alejandro had managed to get out from the other end of the tunnel. He found a corrupt fader ale who turned out to be a courier and a cartel member who was filling the trunk of the police car with lots of drugs. He shot the cartel member and pointed his gun at the fader ale. Unfortunately, Kate showed up. She didn't know that the Federal was a corrupt police officer and asked Alejandro to let him go while pointing her gun at Alejandro. She tried to arrest Alejandro but he instead shot her in her Kevlar vest, avoiding any fatal harm to Kate. Alejandro then went away from the scene using the police car. 
While enduring the pain, Kate got out of the tunnel and met Matt. She suddenly punched him in the face. Matt didn't hit her back and tried to calm her down. After she calmed, she asked Matt about Medellin, the word she heard from Alejandro before she was shot. Matt then explained by telling her the real identity of Alejandro. Alejandro once worked as a prosecutor who was also a part of the famous Medellin drug cartel until one day, a war between drug cartels broke out, killing his wife and daughter. After that incident, he was hired to kill Alarcón, the man responsible for ordering the murder of his wife and daughter. That was how he became a sicario, a Spanish word for hitman or assassin, who would work for anyone to help him fulfill his revenge. Somewhere else, Alejandro had found Manuel Diaz. He told the police to stop Manuel Diaz's car and asked him to get out of his car. After that, he killed the police and forced Manuel Diaz to bring him to Larcón's mansion. Manuel Diaz. Manuel, comprobado. Slow down. When he arrived, he killed Manuel Diaz and the guards at the mansion. He found Alarcón having dinner with his wife and two sons. Alarcón was cornered and begged Alejandro not to kill him in front of his family but Alejandro didn't seem to care. He shot Alarcón's wife and sons, leaving him in shock. He then shot Alarcón to meet his death. The next day, Alejandro appears in Kate's apartment and forces her at gunpoint to sign a statement attesting that the entire operation was legal. Sign it. It's okay. <sighs> As he leaves, she aims her pistol at him and Alejandro looks at her with acceptance, but she cannot bring herself to pull the trigger. <laughs> 